What's going on guys, it's Panjana here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS guide for Rocket League. To make sure you have the best FPS on Rocket League, no matter what sort of system you're running on, whether that be low end, medium end, or high end, you're guaranteed to see an FPS increase from using this guide. The goal of this guide is to ensure that you guys are having the best visuals whilst having the best frame rates and the least amount of lag possible with inside of Rocket League and maintaining a good playable experience on all fronts. With that being said guys, if you are happy with this video and you are happy with the results, if you can share it around with any teammates or any friends that play Rocket League on Steam or whatever, that would be deeply appreciated as well. And if you guys can more importantly, press the like button on this video if you are happy with the results and go down into the comment section below and let me know how much of an improvement you've had, whether or not you recommend this video, any questions, any requests, anything like that, please let me know down in the comment section below at any time as I do read almost every comment and it's always fantastic to get a discussion going on. With all that said and done, let's get right into the video. Okay, so starting off as usual, what you need to go ahead and do is go down into the description below and download the Rocket League FPS pack provided by myself. Go ahead, it'll be a Dropbox link. Go into there, download it, put it onto your desktop. Now you're going to need either 7-Zip or WinRAR to extract this file. Once you've got 7-Zip or WinRAR, just Google around and install it if you haven't already got it. Right click, hit extract here, and you'll be given a folder just like this. Once you guys have got the folder, go inside of the folder and you'll notice there's a CCleaner folder, game configs, unpark CPU, launch parameters, and time resolution.exe. Make sure that all those files and folders are there and then we're pretty much good to go. Okay, so starting off, we're going to be doing the simplest and quickest parts first for the game files. So what we're going to be doing is going into the launch parameters.txt. Inside of here, we're going to be copying all of the launch parameters here from where it says mat anti-alias zero all the way to malloc. We're going to be copying just like so. Then we're going to be going into Steam, going over to Rocket League in Steam, right clicking, going to properties, going Going to set launch options and inside of here we're just going to go ahead right click and hit paste it should look just like this once it looks like this press ok and then hit close next what we're going to be doing is going ahead and installing our game config to do this go into the game configs folder and you'll see a ta system settings that i know now to get inside of this what you need to go ahead and do is go down into your file explorer down here open up a new tab and go to documents or you can simply just go to documents on the left hand side here once you're inside of there we're going to be scrolling down to my games inside of there we're then going to be finding rocket league ta game config and inside of here you'll find the ta system settings folder simply get the one out of the game configs file that i've given you guys drag it over and replace the file in this destination moving on from there we're going to be going ahead and sorting out our game exe files to do this what you need to go ahead and do is go into steam find rocket league again right click go on properties go to local files tab at the top go to browse local files and once you're inside of here we're going to be going into the binaries folder going into windows 32 and we're going to see rocket league.exe right click go to properties go to compatibility. Now this step here, this isn't going to be available for all of you guys. It might depend on what operating system you're running on. It might depend on which version of Windows 10 you're running on and your hardware. So if these two options are not here, which we're going to be selecting now, don't worry about it. You can simply just skip out this option here, but if they are available for you guys, make sure that you apply them. But again, if they're not, don't worry about it. You can just simply skip this part. But for you guys that do have the options available, go down here until you see override high DPI scaling behavior, scaling performed by, highlight that and set it to application. This might be written in a different way. If anything says about high DPI, API scaling behavior, just make sure that you select that and also disable full screen optimizations. Once those two things are checked, press apply and then press OK. And then we can simply exit out of there. And that's pretty much it for the game specific optimizations to do with config files, launch options and stuff like that, which is really going to affect the game. With this next part of the tutorial, what we're going to be going ahead and doing is optimizing windows to ensure that you're also getting the best FPS inside of game as well. This can also have a drastic increase on your frame rate on not just Rocket League, but almost any game that you play. So I do highly recommend that you're doing this. And to be on the safe side and to give you guys peace of mind, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be creating a Windows restore point to ensure that you guys can simply go ahead, press a button and revert your PC back to how it used to be if you don't like anything or anything might be a little bit different or if you just simply want to revert all the changes back within a click of a button you can you can simply do so so to do this i do recommend most of you guys go ahead and do this just to be on the safe side you can delete the system restore point afterwards if you don't wish to revert back but i do recommend that everyone does this just to be on the safe side so to do this go into the bottom left and type in restore once you guys are inside of there you'll see the create a restore point in the control panel come up inside of here we're going to be going to our local disk c drive which should say system it should tell you that system protection is on. If it's not, hit the configure button. I recommend setting around about 5 to 10% on this little slider here of how much of your system can be used for restore points and make sure that turn on system protection is enabled. And then what you can simply do is hit apply and OK. Now what we're going to be doing now is creating our system restore point from this moment. So go down to the create a restore point right now for the drives that have system protection turned on. Hit create. And then we're simply going to name it something simple like backup or anything that you can remember. And then hit create. 
give it a couple of moments to go ahead and finish this for you. And once it's gone ahead and completed that for you, it's going to let you know that the restore point has been created successfully. And then we can simply press close and press OK. Now, anything we do in this tutorial from this point onwards can be reverted back just with a simple press of a button when you restart Windows. If any issues come up, I recommend that you guys go ahead and do that just to be on the safe side. But for the majority, if not nearly all of you guys out there, including myself, will be absolutely fine to go ahead and do this. And they will provide some really, really good optimizations for you guys. Another quick thing you guys can go ahead and do is go down to the description below and select the Windows update as the new Windows full update has just come out and not a lot of people have been given the update proc yet or have they done it manually themselves. So if you guys haven't installed the latest Windows full creators update, it's fantastic for gaming performance on nearly every PC out there, whether it be low end, medium end or high end. It's fantastic and it makes sure that Windows can utilize your resources in a much more efficient manner and has also been reported to give a nice hefty increase to FPS inside of games just from installing this update. So what I want you guys to go ahead and do, go to the Windows update utility, hit the update now button it's going to download this for you and you can simply open it once it's done it's going to check for updates it's going to tell you guys if you're running the latest version of windows and if you're not it's going to tell you that there's an update available and you guys should definitely go ahead and install that but for me there's no updates available and i've already installed this update but again a quick note for you guys who haven't done it make sure that you go ahead do this it's definitely worthwhile all right then so starting off with the windows optimizations first off what we're going to be doing is we're going to be deleting windows temporary files to do this go into the bottom left and type percent app data percent and then press enter Inside of this folder given here, go to the app data folder found here at the top, then go into local, scroll all the way down until you see a TEMP folder, and inside of here what we're going to be doing is highlighting everything inside of this folder from the top all the way down to the bottom, and we're simply going to right click and then press delete. Press yes. And it's going to tell you that the action cannot be completed for all folders and files in this operation. That's absolutely fine, just hit the do this for all current items, and then hit skip. If it gives you that notification again, just hit skip again, and that's absolutely fine. And you'll notice that nearly 99% of the stuff inside of this folder has been removed. Basically, everything that's gone ahead and removed for you guys there are all excess Windows temporary folders and files from days, weeks, months, maybe even years back, depending on how old your system install is. And they're pretty much files that have just been sat there that have been dumped there by excess programs that you might not even have anymore that are not being utilized by Windows, as the only files and folders that were being used by Windows are the only ones remaining, so that's crazy. It's always fantastic to know how much space has actually been removed out of that folder from some people. I've heard stories of people are removing a couple of hundred megabytes all the way up to around about 60 gigabytes, so it's absolutely crazy. So if you guys let me know in the comment section below how much you guys have just removed there, that'd be absolutely fantastic as there's some wacky stories that come out of there. And once you guys are done inside of there clearing out your temp folder, you can simply just exit out. And what I like to do then is also empty our recycling bin. Next, what we're gonna be doing is cleaning up our Windows startup items. To do this, go into the bottom, right click anywhere on your taskbar that is empty, go to task manager, then go to the startup tab found here at the top. Now inside of here, these are all the Windows startup items that boot up whenever you log into Windows. So if you guys go ahead and restart your PCs usually, and then you log into your account and it takes around about half an hour before you can do anything or open anything and your PC is really sluggish and you dread restarting or re-signing back into your PC, this is usually why. Because your startup items are all sat there racing against each other to try and open as quickly as possible when your system's just restarted or you've just logged in. It's trying to open multiple programs and multiple different areas of your hard drive and it can just be a clustered, really sluggish mess. So what I like to do inside of here is I like to pretty much disable almost everything from booting automatically. Now when I say that, stuff like Skype, if you want to go ahead and disable that in Discord, it doesn't mean you can't use these programs. It just means that when you want to use them, you simply go over to them just like Discord now and you press the open button manually. This doesn't mean that when you log into your PC that it opens up all of these programs over each other and you get pop-ups and you get notifications and your PC's really slow. It just stops all of that rubbish from happening. So what I like to go ahead and do is pretty much disable almost everything inside of here. So anything you don't need booting automatically or you're not sure of what it is, make sure that you leave it off. So for instance, Skype is now enabled. What we're going to be doing is selecting Skype, hit the disabled button there in the bottom right. I also don't wish for Spotify Web Helper to be launching automatically. Google Chrome, that can also be disabled. Discord disabled. And all that other stuff can also be disabled. If there's anything in there that you're not sure about what it is, make sure that you leave it enabled just to be on the safe side. Microsoft OneDrive setup, that can also be disabled. And then once you've gone ahead and cleaned up some stuff in there, that's absolutely fantastic. And then you can simply exit out. Next, what we're going to be doing is ensuring that Windows is using all of your resources properly. So go into the bottom left and type in msconfig. Once you've got that typed, press enter. Go to the boot section found here at the top, select your Windows version and your operating system, and then hit the advanced options found here. Under here we're going to be checking number of processes, and we're going to be selecting the highest number available. This could be anywhere from 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, there might even be more. Whichever the highest number is, make sure that you select it. For me that's 12. Once it's selected, then press OK, hit apply, 
OK, and then exit without restart as we're going to be restarting our PCs later on in the guide. Next, we're going to be going into the Windows settings itself. So go into the bottom left hand side and then type in this PC, right click on this PC and go to properties. Then go ahead and go over to the advanced system settings on the left hand side. Go to the advanced tab found here at the top and then go to performance settings. Inside of here, I like to set this to custom under visual effects. And then what I like to do is I pretty much uncheck everything inside of here besides show thumbnails instead of icons and also smooth edges of screen fonts. Now, I personally like smooth edges of screen fonts turned off for myself. Some people like it, some people don't. So if you guys want that silky smooth Windows font as usual, then you guys can go ahead and leave this on as well. But I personally don't, so I'm going to be unchecking it. Once that's done, press apply. Up here at the top, we're going to be going to advanced. We're going to be making sure that processor scheduling is set for adjust best performance for programs. Hit apply. Then go to data execution prevention at the top and then turn it on for essential Windows programs and services only, not for all. So the option here at the top, make sure that's selected, press apply, press OK and then you can simply press OK again. Now we're going to be going ahead and changing our Windows power options to ensure that we are on the high performance power plan. To do this, go into the bottom left and type in power. Then you can click on any of the power options here, which have the battery and the cord going around it, whichever it might be, whether it be choose a power plan or edit power plan, click on any of them. Then at the top, we're going to be going to power options. We're going to be going under show additional plans, and we're going to be looking for the high performance plan. Make sure the high performance plan is then selected, and then you can go ahead and press change plan settings. What we're interested in doing is going into change advanced power settings, and then inside of here, we're going to be going into the hard disk option. Turn off hard disk after and in the setting select it and make sure that you set the number to zero then press apply scroll all the way down to processor power management press the plus key go into minimum processor state and maximum processor state and ensure that they are both set to 100 percent if they're not double click go in set them to 100 manually press apply and then press ok you can then do save changes and you can exit out of your power options now what we're going to be doing is going ahead and going back into the FPS pack provided by myself. Go inside of there and go to the Unpark CPU utility. And inside of here, simply go into unparkcpu.exe and double click. Once you're inside of this utility program, go ahead and hit the check status button. This utility here ensures that all of your CPU cores are unparked, so Windows can use them when and if it's needed and at 100% if needed as well, and it can't throttle it. This might sound scary, but it basically means that if a game needs the resources, the operating system and your hardware are going to give the game the resources it needs to ensure that you guys get the best performance possible. Once it's gone ahead and checked your status, it's going to come back and show you a 0 and a 1 value. It's going to tell you if your status is parked or unparked. Now, if you haven't done this before, you're more than likely going to see the status is parked. All you simply then need to do is hit the unpark all button. Even if it says unparked, make sure you hit unpark all and then wait for it to go ahead and change the registry settings. Then once it's done, you're more than likely going to see that it's gone and set it to unparked. If it was already set to parked, that should be changed now. And then you can simply exit out of the program. Now what we're going to be doing is going ahead and going back into the FPS pack provided, going inside of the C cleaner setup and running that. Once you're inside of the setup, hit the install button and then simply hit run CC cleaner. C cleaner is basically a free utility cleaning program to ensure that your system is being flushed of any excess dump files, any excess trash files, anything that you don't necessarily need that's just being stored in your PC and not being used is going to be cleaned out by this program. It's not going to go and delete your files for you, so you don't have to worry about that. It's just simply going to remove any excess temporary or caching files from your system. So what we like to do is go into the cleaner option here at the top, then hit analyze. And once the analysis is complete, it's going to go ahead and let you guys know how much it's going to remove for you. And it's going to tell you how long it took to do that. And it's going to give you a brief summary of what it can go ahead and remove for you. For me, it's only going to be removing 20 megabytes, but that's absolutely fine. As I only did my last CCleaner analysis yesterday. So if you guys have never done this before, you could be seeing gigabytes upon gigabytes there. Again, let me know in that comment section down below as it's crazy what some people come out and tell me. But what we're interested in doing is going ahead and hitting the run cleaner option and pressing OK. It's going to tell you that Windows Explorer might need to be closed. That's absolutely fine. Just hit yes. And then once it's done, it's going to tell you cleaning complete. It's going to tell you how long it took to do so. And it's going to tell you what it went ahead and removed for you. And once it's done, that's pretty much you done with CCleaner. I recommend using CCleaner either on the first or the last day of every month to stay on top of your system optimization and to ensure that you don't run into any problems when running games and your system just stays up and running to the best of its ability. Now, another handy part inside of CCleaner, what I want you guys to take note of here is it will tell you what your GPU is. I'm personally running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. This might say something along the lines of AMD Radeon, or it might be a different NVIDIA card 
card. But that's absolutely fine as I want you guys to just go ahead and take a mental note now as to what GPU it is that you're running as it is important for the next part of the video. The next part of the video is going to be updating your GPU drivers. So just like what CCleaner told you, whether you guys are running an NVIDIA GeForce card or an AMD Radeon card, go down into the description below and go to the corresponding link for your GPU drivers, whether it be AMD Radeon or NVIDIA GeForce. For instance, we're going to be going to the GeForce site for you GeForce users right now. What I want you guys to go ahead and do is go to the automatic driver updates tab found here at the top and then hit download now. That utility will download. Just simply follow the on-screen prompt and it'll go ahead, detect your GPU for you and download you the latest driver. Just simply follow along with it and it'll do everything for you. For you AMD Radeon users, go to your corresponding link. Go down here to where it says automatically detect and install your driver. Hit the download now function and simply follow along with the setup wizard and it'll go ahead and download your driver for you, detect your GPU and install it for you. Just make sure that you allow it to do so. And once you guys are done with everything inside of there, what I want you guys to go ahead and do right now is go ahead, restart your PCs, turn them off, turn them back on again, come in, boot into Windows, make sure that everything is working fine. You'll more than likely find that you log into Windows a lot faster than you're used to as you've gone ahead and cleaned out a lot in your system. It might have also sped up the overall system responsiveness as well. Simply come back onto this video, open up Steam, and then we're going to be going on to the next steps from there. Okay, so once your system is then restarted, go ahead, boot into Steam, go ahead, go over to Rocket League. We're not going to be booting just yet as we're going to be doing another quick step just to ensure that you guys boot the game properly. Go into the FPS pack provided below, go ahead, get the timeresolution.exe and drag that onto your desktop. This is simply a program to make sure that Windows can access your hardware and the operating system and the game can all talk to each other at a much more sped up rate to ensure that Windows can access your system resources to ensure that you guys have the best frame rates possible, the least amount of lag and reduce input lag in the game as well to ensure that you have the best experience. It's a very simple and very good utility program to use on almost every game. So what we're going to be doing is putting that onto the desktop. Then we're going to be going over to timeresolution.exe, booting into that and hitting the maximum button. Then once we're done playing, simply close out of the game and you can come back into time resolution and hit default. And then you can simply exit out of the program. But see when we're about to be playing, we're going to be going into time resolution, hitting the maximum button and minimizing the program whilst we play. Then once that's all done, you can go ahead, go into Steam, and then you can simply boot into Rocket League. Then once you guys are inside of Rocket League, if you're using an FPS counter, whether it be Fraps or Steam or anything like that to see what your FPS is, you'll notice that the FPS is now also uncapped from 250, so you'll get unlimited FPS. I recommend that you guys go ahead, go into your options menu, as most of your video options will be reset, and you can also go in here and you can turn off any of these if you wish to do so. They're pretty much optimized for the best balance of visual quality and performance to make sure that you guys have the best overall experience and the game looks nice and runs well. What you guys can also go ahead and do if you're running on lower end machines is you can simply go ahead, uncheck all of these options inside of here, turn off everything to high performance and turn off every graphics option available. And you can also bump down your resolution if you wish to do so. But for the majority of people running the config just like this will be absolutely fine. Apply your changes if you wish to do so, hit back. And then what you can simply go ahead and do is play Rocket League, get your friends in, go ahead and do whatever it is that you wish to do so inside of this game and enjoy a much more visually pleasing, snappier and a lot more responsive experience. So that's pretty much it. If you guys do have any questions, please do let me know down in that comment section below as it is always fantastic to get discussion going. If you guys want to share this around with any friends or any family that might be playing Rocket League or any Steam friends or anyone you might know who might benefit from this increase, please do do so as it helps me out a ton. And please also do hit that like button on this video as it helps me out fantastically. And feel free to subscribe to the channel as well for other guides to do with Windows optimization, networking and internet performance increases, other FPS guides for games, GPU overclocking guides, CPU overclocking guides, to ensure that you're getting the most out of your PC, whether it be high end, low end or medium end and ensuring that you have the best performance whilst doing so, no matter what sort of knowledge you have around the subject. So that's my ultimate FPS increase guide for Rocket League. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm Panjano, and I'm out.